a beautiful morning in country New South Wales. In small towns like Molong, a community of under 2,000 just outside Orange, beautiful rolling hills and a relaxed lifestyle are a normal part of life. But beneath this idyllic landscape lurk some harsh realities. People living in country Australia are likely to die years before their city cousins. Look, it's acceptable if you compare it to India or, or parts of Southeast Asia or the Pacific, but is it acceptable in Australia that people who live in a country location have a, a, a lower lifespan, a shorter lifespan than a person who lives in the city? The answer is clearly no. We've really got to be looking at that as a, as a first world country. We should be looking at first world medicine throughout Australia. Well, we are better off than we used to be. take here at night if you get sick. Well, you, the doctors can't work 24 hours a day. Well, there's nobody on call here at night. That, that, that kind of thing isn't right. Mm. Sister Kathleen English has worked in Molong for the past 63 years as a sister of St Joseph. She is all too aware of the struggle facing rural residents in accessing specialised medical care. Well, for a couple of years, I have had trouble with my um, veins. Last year, I had a very bad year. I had to go to see a specialist in Sydney and I ended up in the Mater Hospital five times. It was hard. It was very hard. It's widely recognised, but nobody seems to do anything about it, do they? For people living in country locations, lack of access to essential healthcare services is much more than a geographic inconvenience. Life expectancy for those in rural communities is on average about four years less than those in metropolitan locations. This equates to just under 5,000 premature deaths occurring in rural Australia every year. Clearly, it's the shortage of 1,800, at least 1,800 GPs mm. uh, to rural Australians that's the problem. So the real question is, um, how do we get more Australian trained doctors to work in the country? It's Monday morning and Dr. Robert Williams is on his way to work. Dr. Williams is Molong's general practitioner. In a standard day, he is responsible for the care of not only his patients at his own practice, but also at the local hospital and outreach clinics in nearby communities. Work hours are long and so are patient waiting lists. Molong probably could do with an extra doctor easily. I think we're, we're, and we're very fortunate compared with a lot of other communities. I mean, uh, if you look at the, the number of patients that we see, we probably look after about 1,400 patients per doctor rurally, whereas the average in, in the city is about 750. So we've probably got double the, the patient workload. Um, plus we also do the hospital work. Today, Dr. Williams, along with his practice nurse, Kate, will attend patients at his practice in Molong, act as a visiting medical officer at Molong Hospital, and visit an outreach clinic 40 kilometres away at the even smaller community of Yeovil. Although on a rotational basis for the Yeovil Clinic with another local GP, Dr. Williams' schedule is jam-packed, leaving little room for mistakes. And unlike in the city, apart from his practice nurse, Dr. Williams has no backup. I would call rural general practice as the same as city practice plus, um, because we have less backup, so you do have to do more yourself. But I think that's one of the great 
challenges, but what are all the sort of great benefits of doing it? Because you actually, you know, you are really at, at practicing your craft. But there are sometimes when you've got to you've got to be it, and that's when you know if you get a, a, a trauma case in, or if you get a, a you know a, an emergency presentation at the hospital, you are the first line treatment, and you've got to stabilise the patient, etc., uh, before um, they're either retrieved or, or or they're transferred out. So I guess you you have to use your skills a little more um, as a frontline worker here. It can be overwhelming um, and I think sometimes that responsibility for the doctors and the nurses can be quite overwhelming. We don't have the backup that other city hospitals do. I mean an example here, you know, um, often you're it, the RN and the doctor and I mean given that I've worked in other facilities such as Orange, um, you're not the only RN, there's another 10 on with you, there's another 20 doctors in the hospital here, um, if something happens, it's the doctor and you. It's, so it can be daunting. In many ways, it's not surprising that medical students who train in the city are hesitant to go into country practice. Bruce Robinson, Dean of Medicine at the University of Sydney, believes that the intensity of country practice may be a deterrent to some students. If you're a small town GP, you're essentially on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And a lot of people find that very intrusive. It doesn't leave a lot of time for, um, for family life. He believes fundamental changes to the health system are essential in encouraging more people to head to rural locations. Well, the system has to provide better locum arrangements for rural GPs. For example, a GP in a, a, a small country town of maybe 1,500, 2,000 people decides he or she wants to go on holidays it's often very difficult for them to find someone to take over for that month that they're on holidays. So we need a better system um, to enable that sort of thing to happen. Um, I think too the recognition that financially it's, it's probably more challenging to work in a rural location. Um, that there aren't as many people in a rural location who can afford um, expensive doctors as what there are if you if a person lives and works in a in a in a, an affluent part of a big city, for example. So there are a number of factors I think which make it more challenging to um, to get people to go and live and work rurally.